Hi folks, Mr. Tesalonian back here again. I want to take you through some of the highest voltages I've been able to achieve with the simplest systems on our earth cell designs. Right now I only have four batteries right here, four buckets. Each one is filled with water, some dirt from right out in the yard, and an anode and cathode material that are pretty easy to find. I want to take you through just what we've been able to get out of this. First of all, I want to do a 1.5 volt battery load test, as you can see here. And you'll notice what I have is one of our wires, one of our green wires here is going down to a carbon rod as our cathode there inside of that bucket. That is wired in series over to a copper coil and that one coming off of our galvanized or uh, zinc rod once again running over to our carbon rod, off of our zinc rod to a carbon rod and off of our zinc rod and off of there we have that hooked to our negative lead on our meter here. You can see the coil wire coming right off of there and I've got the positive lead right here and what I'm going to do is try to get that in the sunlight just right for you here and then I'm going to show you a 1.5 volt battery test load test on that cell. So there you go, that's a pretty good load test. Over 1.2 and it was dropping there, it'll top out about 1 volt under load, which is pretty good. That's uh, not quite a full charged AA battery, but out of four simple designs like this, out of easy conductor materials, that's not so bad. What I'd like to show you now is our actual open circuit voltage that this battery cell creates. Alright, so I've got the meter now set on DC open circuit voltage here. And I'm going to once again hook our line from our one cell over here to our positive lead. And you should be able to there, if I can get the meter and the light just right, you should be able to read 3.19 volts. Uh, DC current and open circuit, it's 3.2 now. It'll actually go up as you leave it attached for a while there. You actually start watching that uh, uh, constantly rise and it'll go up to about 3.5 volts. Uh, which is a pretty good reading you know for four buckets here it means that we're under a volt per bucket but that's still pretty good on open circuit now you just saw the load test on this which drops down to about one volt under load so we're getting about uh one third basically of our open circuit voltage a little bit of loss there uh, out of our our battery cell under load now once we've got this up to the voltage we need a whole nother step is going to be bringing the milliamperage up to something that we can actually use. I need to get the milliamperage up to somewhere around 250 milliamps to actually be able to turn any kind of real device with this. So I'm going to go ahead now, start putting together another cell, and we're going to try to see if we can't wire two parallel cells and see if they'll come out with the same one point something volts under load with a much higher amperage. Hi folks, Mr. Tesalonian back here again. We're going to go ahead and try charging our earth cell bucket batteries here. You can see right now the voltage on there in open circuit is 3.09 volts. What we're going to do actually now is take this little solar panel setup. This usually has a 1.5 volt battery. Uh, this is from one of those garden lights that you can buy, a pretty cheap system. I've opened it up and removed the battery out of there, the AA battery, and hooked wires to the output legs of that uh, solar cell. And what we're going to do is actually attach this to this bucket battery bank and leave that for the rest of the day and see if we can actually bring this voltage that we just saw, that open circuit 3.09 volts, up to something much higher. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to attach one leg of this to our carbon and one leg over here to the uh, zinc-covered iron lead pipe here. And we're going to go ahead and let that sit for the rest of the day. And at the end of it, I'll give you a voltage reading and show you exactly what we were able to obtain. All right, folks, so we've let our solar panel now charge our bucket battery bank all day long. We're wired to our anode and cathode material right here to the output and the input, basically, to the little solar-powered patio light. And it's got a photosensitive eye solar panel a little LED light right there in the center that you can see. And right now, you notice there's no AA battery in there. We are strictly powering off our bucket battery bank. And I wanted to show you that we can actually store and use energy from something that's a lot more chemically neutral than the actual AA battery or a lead acid battery that we use today and made out of much easier to find materials. So let me get this camera set up here at the right angle. And we're going to flip on the switch here at the top. Look at that, folks. So that's light, that's real work being produced by our bucket battery bank. If I turn that off and on, you should be able to see that a lot easier. It's still kind of bright out here. So we've been able to apply a charge 
Uh, the open circuit voltage was over 4 volts when I just checked, and the load voltage was actually over 2.07 volts under load on a 1.5 volt battery load test. So we were able to put a pretty good load or a pretty good charge on our bucket battery banks. So this is now replacing my AA battery. So basically I could set this now on a little pedestal right in the center of these buckets and have myself a nice night light powered on something that I don't have to replace from the store. Uh, this is something that we can now go to a much larger scale and we can increase the size of the workload that we can apply instead of being a single little LED light. Hopefully now on the next size set of this project, we're going to increase these buckets, we're going to increase the amount of actual anode and cathode materials in each one of the buckets, producing higher milliamperage, and we're also going to see if we can't turn an actual DC motor and produce real work from our bucket battery bank, all charged by simple little, like I think this was $3 solar panel, uh, that's really easy to acquire, something that you can get at a store. This will actually produce work and energy for your home.